G'day legends, in this video we're going to be talking about Nate Diaz who is apparently not getting paid for his boxing event that he did with Jorge Masvidal, going through some of the details, giving some of my thoughts and opinions on it and just breaking down this entire crazy situation. Somewhere on an island, well I guess he's not on an island, he's at the uh, RNC convention, but somewhere Dana White is pissing himself laughing at the situation and it's pretty bad for Nate Diaz. I do feel bad for the guy, but there's a lot of little details here. So rather than rambling along and pretending like I have inside information for 20 minutes, let's just get straight into it. So news has come out that Nate Diaz is suing Fanmio Inc, who is the promoter for Diaz versus Masvidal for $9 million, which he claims was guaranteed to him in writing and orally. It was meant to be $1 million in advance and then paid a further $9 million after the fight, for which he alleges the uh, company Fanmio, or the promoter Fanmio, has since reneged on paying him. Ariel Helwani dropped the news, so let's listen to Ariel Helwani surmise it for us. Fanmio and Engel are now reneging on their written and oral promises and guarantees to pay $9 million owing to Diaz because they claim they are going to lose money on the event. In a flurry of desperate calls to Diaz's representatives following the event, Engel despondently groveled that he was going to lose more money than he anticipated on the event if he paid Diaz what he had promised and that his wife might divorce him because of the financial losses. Engel went so far as to threaten he might have to declare bankruptcy to avoid paying Diaz what he owed. So we're looking at $10 million all up. Now, apparently Nate Diaz was already paid half a million dollars in advance, which is already a warning sign. The story goes that Nate Diaz was meant to be paid $1 million in advance. Instead, he got paid $500,000 in advance. There is a bit of a discrepancy here already before we've even gone and had the boxing a fight. Now, to me, that is an absolute robbery. I don't know about you guys, and I understand that every single industry is different. Trust me, I've worked in different industries, but I run my own business, and now it's a trade business, but I don't take my tools out of the van for less than a 30% deposit, at least, at least a 30% deposit. And when I work with companies that I don't know, companies that I haven't worked with before, and if the job is of a particular size even bigger, I might bump that up to a 40, 45% deposit. But again, having said that, this is the trade industry, that is the promotional boxing industry, every industry is different. But I do think that if someone says, we're gonna give you $1 million up front and then pay you $9 million on top of that later, and then they rock up with a paycheck of half a million dollars, I wouldn't be walking into the arena. I would be saying, well, before the events even started, you're already half a million dollars short here, bud. I guess the next thing that my mind goes to is once you've already been stiffed on half of your upfront payment, and you're getting these verbal and written agreements that they are good for the rest of the money. Why are the funds not in an escrow account? I really want to know who is organizing this. Why does Nate Diaz not have a lawyer? And again, I'm not like some big baller businessman, but I have a lawyer. He's not on retainer, but I have a lawyer that I can work with and that I can call up. Like I have an accountant. I have a lawyer. I don't, you know, it's a, it's a case by case, fee by fee, consultation by consultation basis. But I mean, I'm a nobody. <laughs> like I, I am literally a nobody. I, I, I'm a self-employed business. I just, I know a lawyer that I can call when I need one that I've worked with before doing property deals. Like this is Nate Diaz. He is fought Jake Paul. He has done not only a massive career in boxing, but he has had private boxing events where he has like kept the profits and I would assume pay himself. An escrow account is a very basic thing, by the way, if you're not sure, it's, it's a third party that will hold on to guaranteed money. It's usually a legal firm, but they will hold on to money while something is being settled. And in this case, it would be the boxing event. Who is Nate Diaz's manager? Is it one of his mates in the black hoodie that follow him around acting like a 40 year old gangster? Like, is this who Nate Diaz is employing to work for him? Is anybody running this like a business? So he's been stiffed on half the deposit. 
He doesn't seem to have a lawyer anywhere in sight before he gets into this, and the money isn't in an escrow account. Now, I understand that right now, it seems like I am heaping a lot of the blame onto Nate Diaz, and I, I'm sorry if it's coming off that way. I mean, this is Fan Mio's fault. He promised something would happen, and it hasn't happened. So, if this is true, allegedly, this is Fan Mio's fault. But I'm just like thinking about Nate Diaz here. He isn't dotting his I's and crossing his T's. There is no one running this ship that has any sort of business sense. And it is a little bit worrying and a little bit sad for Nate Diaz. So, so far we have got a 5% uh, deposit instead of a 30% deposit. Um, we have no money in a holding account. Um, we've never provided services to this company, Fanmio, before. And the funds being negotiated are very, very large. Very large. Now, I'm just going to show you guys this statement because Fanmio has put out a statement. And what is very interesting in here is that in the statement, Fanmio claims that Nate has already been paid seven figures. Everything is all good. He doesn't say that Nate has been paid in full. And I'm pretty sure $10 million is eight figures. I, I mean... Five, half, of, half a million dollars is six figures, so a million dollars is seven figures, and ten million dollars would be eight figures. So not only is he not saying that Nate Diaz hasn't been paid in full, but Fanmio is pretty much also essentially admitting guilt here that he is not going to be paying Nate Diaz the full amount. Something very odd is clearly going on. Number one, Nate Diaz wouldn't be wasting time by now hiring lawyers and now opening up a lawsuit if he had gotten paid. Secondly, Fanmio has now gone ahead and said that, yeah, we've paid him something, <laughs> which is what Nate Diaz is claiming. Like, yeah, you paid me something, but not the whole amount. The issue here is Fanmio is saying that they didn't make enough money on the sale and they didn't make enough money on the event, should I say. And quite frankly, that's your problem, right? That is your problem if you didn't make enough money on the event. This is the criticism that everyone has had about the entire boxing world that Dana White constantly tells us. It is a going out of business sale every single time. Yeah, people are saying the event was full, the house was crowded, but someone needs to pay for renting that arena. Someone needs to pay for the huge stage and light production. Someone needs to pay for the doctors and the athletic commission. Someone needs to pay the camera crew. Just on the event alone, I don't know if the crowd being full enough, if the, if the people sitting in the seats covers the cost of the event alone, especially when the performer on stage is getting paid a one-off fee of $10 million. Then of course, there's the pay-per-view sales on top of that. Who the hell bought that pay-per-view, okay? I'm sure that we all we all looked to the east, you know? I'm sure we were all cooking up some, cooking up some, we were trying to crack the code of how to watch these streams, if you know what I'm saying. I'm sure we were out there, you know? There are ways, there are ways to watch these pay-per-views without actually paying for them. And I'm sure plenty of people out there did. I'm not sure who actually paid for this pay-per-view. So when you're taking in, all of the production costs that needs to happen just to put on this show. There is a reason that companies like the UFC or even performing artists all over the world punch out the exact same show the exact same way again and again and again and again and again. It is to cover the costs in the long term of putting on those shows. The problem with a boxing event is everything has to be done and organized differently for every single event, which is why People, which is why Dana White constantly harps on about the UFC being a business model and a company. Now, everyone is very, very quick to jump on the UFC's back and give them a whole ton of shit when fighter pay comes up. And I can understand that. Everybody wants to be paid more. The fighters want to be paid more. Hell, I, again, run my own business. I want to be paid more. But I can only make the sort of money that I make compared to the market. I have to quote against every other trademan in, tradesman in my city. And until a company comes along that can run a profitable business like the UFC, the market cap for what fighters get paid is what it is. Until there is another company that is also making a profit again and again and again, year after year after year, Every other company like the PFL or like One or like Ryzen or like these boxing events is sort of capped and the UFC doesn't have to pay the promoter, the fighters anymore until the company catches up to where the UFC is. And then you can actually get into a proper, a proper battle over what to pay these fighters. 
But as long as the UFC is the only company that is making a profit, the UFC is going to be holding the market at sort of, I mean, this is what fighters get paid. And unless anyone can prove them wrong, it is what it is. You've got companies like the boxing companies or like the PFL that do pay some fighters more than what the UFC does. Obviously, we have seen big boxing promotions where Tyson Fury does get paid more than, say, a Kamara Usman or an Israel Adesanya. But let's be real here. No one else on that undercard is getting any sort of money. And let's be even realer here. If it wasn't for the Saudis keeping boxing alive, then quite frankly, boxing in 2024 would just be Jake Paul punching on with old retired bastards and old retired MMA fighters. It is the Saudi influx of cash that is keeping boxing alive. And shall we be realer? The Saudis make all their money drilling for oil and using slave labor to pay for it. Sorry, they're just the facts. The UFC actually ends up paying its camera crews and its businessmen. The UFC pays everyone who works at the PI a living wage. The UFC pays all the salaries for everyone on the promotional desk and the doctors and pays the commission and they turn a profit and return it to their investors as well. Is the UFC a perfect company? No. Have they made a lot of mistakes in the past? Yes. Were they monopolistic in the past? Absolutely they were but they are a legitimate company that turns a legitimate profit. And sometimes people like Ariel Hawani and Luke Thomas just hate to admit that. And sometimes that is just good for the fighters. Being able to be employed not just today, but tomorrow and guaranteed payment is a good thing. Anyway, don't want to glaze the UFC too much. Obviously, they could do better. Like I said, if they're making a huge amount of profit, obviously fighters could get paid more. This is why we should all support promotions like One Championship. If we can ever get another promotion to the level of the UFC where they're making a profit like the UFC, then we can actually have a fair battle between the UFC and another company for fighter pay and actually get these fighters paid more. But until then, we're just gonna ha keep having going out of business sales like this one with Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal. So anyway, <clears throat> anyway. Didn't want to harp on this one for too long. Oh, lastly, by the way, in the statement of please don't ask for all the money my wife is going to leave me from this Fanmio bloke, leave your wife, mate. She's a gold digger, all right? If she's literally saying I'm going to leave you if you go bankrupt, that, she, that woman don't love you, mate, all right? Get out of that one. That's no good for you, brother. Get out of it. Keep an eye on this one. Once again, boxing being very, very sus. Must be hard for Ariel Hawani to admit that the UFC fighters actually get paid. Let me know down there in the comments. Do you think Nate Diaz is ever going to be getting paid? What do you think is going to happen here? Do you think this is legit? If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you're new around here, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? Every single subscriber matters to small creators like myself. And until then, you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.